using an electronic cigarette, an e-cigarette, or vaping in the past year? Everyone. Okay, so it seems like every week in the news there's a new story about e-cigarettes and vaping. Now vaping, which is the act of inhaling a vapor that usually contains nicotine, has many friends, many, many supporters, many enemies and opponents, and there's a lot of people who are somewhere in the middle and don't really know what to think about it. So today I'm going to talk about vaping as an innovation, a disruptive technology that, if used by the right people, and only the right people, can ultimately benefit public health by reducing the death and disease caused by cigarette smoking. So what is a disruptive technology? Well, it's something that unexpectedly comes in and makes an existing technology obsolete. So we don't see too many blockbuster rental video stores anymore after Netflix came in and kind of knocked it off course uh, and disrupted it. A lot of people think that taxi cabs one day will be replaced by technologies like Uber. So what if there were a disruptive technology, some type of innovation that could make cigarette smoking obsolete? This has been the dream for decades, to drive the smoking rate down to zero. So today I'm going to talk about how, in my opinion, vaping could be that innovation if used by the right people. So we've known, this is no surprise to you, we've known for over 50 years how deadly cigarette smoking is. Uh, and in 1964, the U.S. Surgeon General published this really pivotal report in which the U.S. government formally stated for the first time that cigarettes cause cancer and many, many other diseases. It's the only product that, if used exactly as directed, will probably kill you. Right? And the good news is that since 1964, when about 42% of Americans were smokers, almost half of Americans were smoking then, uh, current rates are now down to about 17%. And this is great news, and this is because of things like educational campaigns to prevent smoking among young people, uh, policy changes like smoke-free air laws and increases in taxes on cigarettes, and all of that stuff should continue because it's clearly working. But at the same time, 17% of Americans are still smokers. That's 55 million people, despite knowing for 50 years how deadly it is. So even though we've made a ton of progress, I don't think we've made enough. Perhaps most troubling is that smoking rates are highest among populations that historically have been disadvantaged or discriminated against or experienced or experience hardships. So people with low levels of education, low income, certain racial and ethnic minorities, uh, LGBT Americans, people with, with disabilities, whether it's physical or mental, uh, war veterans, all of these groups have elevated rates of smoking. Now it's hard for anyone to quit smoking. Nicotine is unbelievably addictive, but it's even harder for people who experience daily life stressors, who have worse access to health care, who, who have less resources available to help them quit. Nicotine is unbelievably addictive. But what most people don't realize is that nicotine itself is not deadly at all. Nicotine does not cause cancer. Nicotine does not cause lung disease. It does not cause heart disease. All it is is addictive. So it keeps you addicted to all the horrible stuff that cigarettes have. And, and this is the principle behind many, many therapies that help smokers quit, like, like the nicotine, uh, I'm sorry, the, the nicotine gum or the nicotine patch. They deliver a cleaner form of nicotine to satisfy the addiction, but they don't deliver all those other harmful chemicals. The problem with these therapies is that no one likes to use them. Uh, they're, they're effective, they're pretty effective, but no one likes to use them. So what if there were a technology, an innovation, that could deliver a cleaner form of nicotine and that smokers were receptive to using. Enter vaping. So in a newly released report that was sponsored and, and commissioned by the UK government, the authors concluded that vaping is undeniably less risky than smoking. And they start off by saying, it is not safe. And it's not. It, it, there's exposures. There's chemical ex exposures. Um, there are detectable levels of carcinogens in vaping products. So it is not safe by any means, but compared to smoking, which is the worst thing you could possibly do, vaping is, is substantially less risky. And they ultimately concluded that if you have smokers who have tried and tried to quit and keep failing, or if you have smokers that just don't want to quit, have no interest, encouraging those groups and only those groups to switch to a vaping product could ultimately reduce the risk of death and disease. So now, vape, interest in vaping is just at an all-time high. Since 2010, when the first e-cigarettes entered the market, 
Google searches of the word vape have increased exponentially. And in 2014, Oxford Dictionary named vape its word of the year. Number two was bay. You know, like your, your significant other, your bay. Um, so we're in this vaping craze right now. And amid this vaping craze, I started to notice as I was driving around my neighborhood, and actually as I was driving into Blairstown today, um, I saw, I've been seeing vape shops popping up left and right. It seems like in every vacant storefront, there are vape shops popping up. So this has been the focus of, of my research over the past year. Where are these vape shops popping up? Because we know that there are way more cigarette retailers in places that have high poverty, that have a lot of racial and ethnic minorities, but no one really knows where the vape shops are popping up. So I located every single one in New Jersey. Um, and you can see that from 2011 until now, the number of vape shops in New Jersey has grown so, so quickly. And now there are over 130 in the state. And this is as of, as of July of 2015, so I'm sure there are many, many more now. So where are they located? As it turns out, as the number of cigarette retailers increases, it becomes more and more likely that you'll find a vape shop. And this shouldn't be surprising to anyone because these retailers are, are looking to attract smokers who want to quit, right? So no surprises here. But this is where it gets interesting. Vape shops are located in predominantly white neighborhoods that have very low numbers of black and Hispanic residents. So as the number of racial and ethnic minorities increases, it becomes less and less and less likely that you're going to find a vape shop or vapor retailers. And for me, this is, this is troubling. Um, this is potentially problematic because we know that vaping is less risky than smoking. We also know that African Americans in particular historically have the most difficulty quitting. They have the, the uh, least amount of success quitting. We also know that racial minorities in general experience social and economic hardships at higher levels than the general population. So right now, and we know this from national data, right now the smokers who are benefiting by switching to a vaping product are white smokers. Um, so my worry is that this difference in access to a less risky product and, and difference in, in utilization rates can ultimately be worsening existing health inequalities. Now vaping is at the center of this really intense debate for a good reason. It's, it's very controversial. So there are undeniably benefits, as I've discussed, but there are also serious concerns, uh, risks that really concern me. So on one hand, vaping may one day eliminate tobacco use. This is the goal. Um, it could be that disruptive technology that we're looking for to drive down rates of smoking and ultimately eliminate it. But many people argue, well, there are people who would have quit completely, but now you're giving them another option to just maintain their nicotine addiction. Vaping it can be seen as a form of harm reduction. So yes, even though people are getting exposures, they may still be addicted to nicotine, they're reducing their own risk of disease greatly by switching to this product. But these are new products. The first ones entered the market around 2010. So we haven't done those long-term studies necessary to determine the, the long-term health effects. Vaping does not produce smoke. There's no burning of tobacco. So, so whenever you're not burning something, you're not releasing all those uh, carcinogens associated with that combustion. Um, so there's no secondhand smoke, which not only is reducing the user's risk of disease, but potentially reducing the risk of disease for people around them, like children of smokers, for example. But speaking of children, e-cigarettes and, and vaping products appeal to youth. We know this. We've seen the numbers climbing. Uh, and this is, to me, this is very troubling because, as I said in the beginning, there's, there's a certain groups of people who would benefit from this. It's not youth who may never have tried smoking, but want to try vaping because it's cool and it comes in flavors, then they may develop a nicotine addiction and who knows, switch over to an even more risky product like cigarettes or, or cigars. Um, so, so this is very troubling. And, and this debate will certainly continue for, for years to come. In my view, the best case scenario would be for every single smoker to just quit completely. No nicotine at all. That's the best case scenario. And when friends or family ask me what they should do, that's the first thing I tell them. Use every method available to you to try to quit. But as we've seen, that is not an easy feat because 17% of Americans, that's one in five, almost one in five Americans, are still smoking despite knowing how bad it is for you. Um, so for those people who have extreme difficulty quitting or who have no interest in quitting, switching to vaping could potentially improve their health and improve public health. Uh, and I want to conclude with a cautionary note that 
any innovation, innovation is the theme of today's talks, any innovation, not just vaping, can only benefit society and lead to widespread societal change if it's accessible and utilized by the entire population, not just select privileged groups. Thank you very much.